this. Still, always, that one's, <laughs> that one's yeah. still in the gym working. Oh, that's cool. That's nice. <laughs> oh, it is hard. <laughs> Hi guys and welcome back to another video back on the Driven 24-7 Automotive YouTube channel and finally I am giving you guys some Punto content, a Bath Punto content. So we are here today at Southgate Motorsport with brothers Simon and Chris who race these Puntos on track. So I'm going to introduce you to them both now. We're going to do a walk around. There's one, two, three, four, five cars here. We're going to do a little bit about each car. So let's get to it. So I'm here with brothers Simon and Chris from Southgate Motorsport. We've also got a few cars to talk about in here, but shall we talk about the ones, because you've got one of these each, that you both race in and you race in together competitively. So there's a bit of a brotherly love on the track, <laughs> trying to beat each other. So let's start with this one then. So these are actually Punto Abbas from factory, but they've only ever been used on the track. If you talk about the engine first on this one. Yeah. So these were both Irish spec race cars, genuine R baths. And the engine, it's the 1.8 twin cam, which came in the HGTs. These engines and these two grey ones have been modified, not full race engines, but they've had a lot of work done on them. Race heads, custom cams, intake throttle bodies, and the bottom ends have been balanced. Engine work is done on these two was done by Brett Sims Motorsport. So yeah, he does a good job on that. The map inside, the cars run full motorsport wire and loom, and they run uh, EFI Euro 1 ECU, mapped by Mike Longman at Longman Racing. Probably the best one in the country for EFI Euro ECUs. So um, what power are we talking from this then, horsepower? Horsepower on these is 200 brake horsepower at the flywheel. Yeah, wow. And it's a good, High cup on power from standard. The cars weigh 1100 kilograms with the driver in fully kitted up and with a race amount of fuel in. So they're, they're lively on track for sure. Yeah, and you were saying that, like, obviously, some people when you turn up in a Punto, some people don't take you seriously, but once you start getting them, chasing them down on the corners, they sort of, yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> take you a bit more seriously in the Puntos. It turns up on the trailer, it's just a Punto, isn't it? Yeah. And as soon as you get it out on track and show them what you're made of, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a it's a, it's a full-fledged race car so yeah, and like we straight. say they're light so they might not be the fastest car on the straights but you can catch up with people on the no, corners and that's yeah, weather so they run s s full race suspension coil over leader suspension and slick tires so cornering speeds uh, are pretty good in these what sort of type of slicks are they uh, so these cars the two gray cars are running uh, michelin slicks okay yeah, they're a good tyre. They're hard compound, so we can get a good length of time out of them on track. Yeah. Uh, without having to replace them all the time. So we're just on the interior now. Obviously, we've got a full roll cage. Um, the Sparco seat, what sort of model is that one? It's a Circuit GP. There's a full race seat, and then you've got the harnesses. They're nice. They're a full five-point harness, which has to be the seats not dated. 
unless you're using it for FIA use, which we don't. Harnesses, they have, they're dated. We've got the nice um, above gear normal I spotted. So you said they run sort of normal five-speed gearboxes. Yeah, so these the cars run um, just a standard gearbox, and it's got a quaff limited slip diff in it. Um, we run a slightly thicker gearbox all in them for heat and stuff. Yeah, due to the heat that they get up, up to. What sort contract. of steering wheel is that? Uh, it's just a normal racing steering wheel. It's quick. Quite release. a little one, yeah. Yeah, it's quick release, but um, it's, Chris has got some wiring on there for a, for a button for launch control. So has it got launch control? Yeah, it's got launch control mapped in. Oh my goodness! Uh, so what we got a nice Alcantara dash here as well. This is like a blank in plate, obviously. All different sorts of switches and what's that? Your fuel gauge, obviously. What do these ones do? Then these are just quick release sort of safety ones, are they? Yeah. So this is the electric cutoff, yeah. which can be pulled from outside, outside. the car to kill the ignition. Yeah. And then the fire extinguisher pull cord. Oh, and there's all sprinklers in the engine bay. Yeah. yeah. Does that, does the, um, so you've got like a digital screen, does that tell you when to change up and down gear and stuff like that? Or Chris's one's quite a nice dash. His has got full sequential shift lights on it, mm -hmm. as well as all the, he can flick between different screens and stuff like that and display the information he wants to display. Like we've got like these door panels as well, obviously, yeah, just for lightweight. So the doors are fully. Um, skinned from the inside, so they got no no mechanisms in them. Are these plastic windows as well. Yeah. yeah Chris has got Chris runs Perspex windows in yeah. these. And Simon's has spoken about Chris's car. This is Simon's race car. But you're just saying they're basically both exactly the same cars. So it is literally a rivalry of who's the best driver out. You two brothers. <laughs> yeah. There's the odd small difference. Mine's still got glass in, whereas Chris has got. Oh, okay. So it's very minimal difference yeah. in weight, but. Just the odd little bit here and there, but engine, um, everything like that, it's all exactly the same. And these are the little things that you pull from the outside. So that one is, what's that, the fire extinguisher Yeah, one? that's the extinguisher. So you pull that up and there's all fire extinguishers, like sprinklers under there. Then that one's just to cut the power off, like yeah, ignition. Yeah, will cut the... So in case of emergency, the... someone knows what to do with those, basically. Yeah, marshals all know what to do with them. Um, obviously, this is an intake. Yeah, the that's just the air that's feed. So, cool. so you've got a pipe that'll run right the way around um, the back of the engine to feed the throttle bodies. Yeah. Um, just cold air feed. And why the um, livery? Why the grey and luminous green? I love it. <laughs> um, we don't know really. When Stands we, out, obviously. Yeah, when we when we done these cars, we wanted to change from our old livery. Yeah, we'll show you that in a minute. Yeah. Just um, freshen it up a little bit, and these are the colours we landed on. So this is this is actually a uh, fit. 500 R bath colour, oh, okay. which is um, Electro Clash Grey, so we kept it with a Fiat colour, Yeah. but I don't think they made these puntos in this colour. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah, and obviously the, the luminous yellow, let's say it makes us stand out. Oh, it? totally. So, yeah. <laughs> Here we have the older punto out of the collection, which I personally like, and this is what the livery looked like when you first went into punto sort of motorsport. Yeah, um, so this was the first livery we had. Before the grey and luminous. Before the grey yeah. and luminous. Uh, so we had um, two Unos. Yeah, you used to start off with car. Unos and then you went on to the Puntos. Yeah, so we started racing early 2000s in Fiat Racing Challenge in the UK. Um, that was predominantly Unos at the time. Yeah. Um, the odd 127. So this was run in that championship. Um, you don't use this one too much anymore, see, because you've got the no, other one. No, this one hasn't been run. It's got an engine in it that's ready to be started. It's got the old Yeah, it's all together, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it just hasn't been used. Yeah, and so. you've got some, again, slicks on here, some tiny little, what are they, comprimative wheels? Yeah, comprimative wheels with uh, Matador race slicks, 13 inch. And this is all roll caged up. There's no seat in it, is there, at the moment, obviously, no. but we can have a look at the inside. I love, really like this livery. Oh, I see, you've got a Sparco wheel. I like this. Oh, I like what you've done to the uh, dials there as well. That's quite cool. So engine wise, power wise, what are we talking with this one? Um, originally, the car was built with a 1242 8 valve in it, which was 100 brake horsepower, which doesn't sound mega power, but the car weighs um, very slightly over 700 kilograms. With me wow. In it, so it's super light. That engine failed, so it's got a 1.4 16 valve engine in it. Mm -hmm. uh, full race head with cams. It runs uh, full motorsport wiring boom. Uh, Omax race 
um, ECU. Yeah. Uh, so when it's all mapped up and running correctly, it should be uh, 125, maybe 130 brake horsepower. Yeah, and like you say, you don't use this one, but it is really to, just needs a bit of tinkering. You can get it back working yeah, again. It it's more for a sentimental value while you've obviously still got it here. Yeah. It's so how it all started in the Puntos. Yeah, so this is a championship winning car. I won the championship in 2008. Wow. Um, so it's just got a bit of sentimental value, really. Yeah, That's definitely. Fine. It's still there. Yeah. <laughs> a bit then. <laughs> Like the temperature and stuff. Yeah, so you've got oil pressure, fuel pressure, you've got engine temperature, and you get gear selector, yeah. the little square there, RPM, and then obviously you can. Um, oh, you can change it for different screens. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's nice. <laughs> get different colours and customise wow. it to how you want. I got yeah. qualifying one. And it's still telling you down the bottom that the engine's cold. Yeah, so when it reaches a certain temperature, the blue lights will go off. When you're ready, like. Um, then, yeah. <laughs> You've just seen these two start up and be brought into the sunshine on this lovely day. So this particular car we're going to talk about, one of you guys can drive this thing. So this is a sort of idea you've come up with where someone can hire this and take it out on track. The idea behind this car is, like you say, to get people out on track in it. It's fully prepped for racing as well. So And it's got want, two seats as well, so one of you can... Seats, yeah, so track days, if you wanted to hire it, and it's the first time out, we can come out and give you some guidance, show you uh, racing lines and things like that, help you out until you get a bit of confidence and then you can go out yourself in it. So you're taking this car out yourself next week just to make sure it's like, you need to get it 100% first, final touches. Yeah, we've, um, we've just finished rebuilding it, so... We're at Castle Coombe on Tuesday, in it just mm -hmm. to give it a shake down, just make yeah. sure everything's how it should be. So straight away, it's up for hire. And um, you found this in a barn, was it? You came um, across well, it. The story behind it is got this car I used to race against the blue one. In the oh, world. okay. So you've always known it, sort in of. The Fiat Racing Challenge. The series um, stopped running. Uh, the fella put it in a barn to keep it out of the elements, and it was sat there for ten years. Oh, we kept in contact with him and one day he said whoever he wanted it to do something with so we dragged it out of the barn and got it back here and it was a few different shades of uh, pink <laughs> yeah had the odd rat's nest here and there but <laughs> all of that's been completely taken out and it's been all the insides being completely redone fresh engine so yeah it's good to go it's been mapped we've upgraded a few things it's got a full uh, mount port wiring room and standalone ecu again. so again what power is this running so this what engine um, this is about 135. It needs uh, remapping really to see if we can get some more power yeah, out of it. But it was done. at the moment, yeah. Yeah, um, again, Longman Racing mapped it uh, quickly for us just to, make, cool. just to make sure it was uh, running right. Completely standard engine. The only difference is it's got uh, 2 litre twin spark cams out yep. of an Alpha engine. Oof. And then it's just small things like intake exhaust, all the intake 
throttle body side of it, it's all standard. We're just saying compared to this one compared to this one, this is like another level, this is proper hardcore. This, this... one's on steroids, that one's <laughs> that one's still in the gym working on it. <laughs> still in the gym working out. So um yeah, this has got some sort of normal standard features on, like you said, it's still electric windows, C steering and stuff, yeah. so it's a fairly sort of standard car, but it's not on the track when you get it on the track. No, yeah, we think the, the focus is on suspension and stuff like that to make it handle well but also like you say it's not as extreme as that um, things like the electric steering uh, windows things like that still will work on it and what were you saying about a suspension to me a minute ago set up so the suspension is i mean it's not a budget but as i say again not as hardcore it's not, yeah it's not coil overs it's fully adjustable dampers yeah um, with race springs on. And again, you've got the slicks on here anyway, obviously, yeah, the Team Dynamics. Um, team Dynamics wheels with Michelin slicks again. There's no comparison to running on slicks. No, yeah, we were trailer. saying that earlier. Yeah. The, I mean, you're looking at like three seconds a lap quicker. Wow. Slick at least. So, just get on to the inside, we've obviously got the door cards here. Red OMP seat, we've got a two tone. Cobra, which I've just sat in. <laughs> it's nice for a while, but I suppose it isn't once you're on track and uh, in it for a little while. <laughs> it's just it's just a standard gearbox. And this one hasn't got a diff in, which is something we're going to have to do. We think just got a Helix paddle clutch in it. Yeah. Just to take the punishment on track. And you still got like the original dashboard here. So city steering uh, button there, the electric windows. We've got the fuel gauge down there. We've got a nice little OMP steering wheel here. Sparco pedals. Obviously, this is roll caged. What have we got in there? The because obviously it's running a standalone ECU, you lose all the function of the instrument. Ah, oh, okay, yeah, you so have to that's get your been own removed, in there. and then you've just got your basic dials, your your um, water temp, your RPM, uh, oil pressure, and a couple of warning lights. The seat I ask because I'm little, so the seat does go forward and back for little yeah. or tall people that want to take this yeah, out and hire it. Fully adjustable. <laughs> We've made it so it's on runners, so, so anyone can, go can get in. Way forward. Yeah. Yeah, and then that can be adjusted again if, if you've got someone who's super tall or yeah. um, a little bit shorter. Yeah. So part of this package is also you're not just hiring the car, you're hiring you guys, you will trailer it up there. Yeah, it'd be a, an arrive and drive package basically. You pick a track there you want to do mm -hmm. or a race event I mean, because it is um, fully compliant to the Alfa Romeo Championship power trophy specs. Yeah. So it, it can be raced, we just remove the seat, the passenger seat. Mm. But the passenger seat's also here for new people, so you can sit in the driver, yeah, and so you can on, do a tutorial. On track days, we can give you some, some guidance if it's first time on track, yeah. show you some lines and things like that to get a bit of confidence in the car. Yeah. So that's, that's, that will all be included in uh, in just using the car, renting the car. Yeah, so you're paying for a whole package, you're not just paying for the car, it's a whole package, yeah, no, a bit of tutorial for you be, guys. Um, it would be an arrive and drive, so you pay and tell us what track you want to do, obviously that mm -hmm. varies on the price. Yeah, of course, yeah. Um, circuit wise, um, we tend to use Castle Coombe because it's more local to us and it's a good circuit for track mm. time. we are turn up with the car, make sure it's running all right and any problems throughout the day we're You'll sort them out, yeah, because you know the car, yeah. It'll just be a case of turning up and bringing your helmet and driving it. Cool. Whoa. Yeah, we're in. Oh, it's not too loud, actually, when you're inside. It's just echoey, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, when, you, uh, when you're on track and you're up around six grand, it'll uh, be a bit noisier. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's not too bad. Oh, it is hard. <laughs> and like you said, you can hear every single stone turning up through the arches. Yeah. So that's what oh, we're saying. it's very you bumpy. Would, you wouldn't want to drive it on road. No. So what speeds can this reach, like? I mean, it's not a record breaker no, no. in a straight line, but I mean, cornering, cornering speeds is where it's at. Yeah, yeah, catching up on the straight liners. Yeah, I mean, you're seeing over a hundred miles an hour in first seconds. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's um, yeah, <laughs> very hard, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> also, if you're on a smooth track, it's alright. That's what it's just for. But up and down a car park, it is not. 
But apart from that, it's easy to drive, yeah? Like, obviously, if you're on a track. Yeah, it's, um... Still got power steering, still yeah? Still got power steering, so it's nice around the paddock. Yeah. Um, the clutch, it's got a paddle clutch in it, but it's not overly aggressive. It's just a friendly car to drive, really. Yeah, a good starting point, isn't it, for yeah. what you're going to try and do this thing, and it gets very hot in here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, launch control. That's nuts. <laughs> Small sort of exhaust system, just a custom made. Yeah, it's just, uh, just a custom made exhaust, uh, just with one silencer in. Oh, one silencer. Yeah. So this isn't actually yours, but it's one you help maintain. And this chap that owns this car does race with your Puntos. Yeah, he races in the Alphas with us in the same class. This car is exactly the same as the grey ones in terms of suspension, roll cage and things like that. The only thing that's different is the engines, not as tuned as those ones. So what sort of, do you know what sort of power this one is? That one's it's about 160 brake horsepower, so a little bit up on, well it's flat brake more than standard. The actual engine wise is standard apart from the 2 litre twin spark cams and then runs the full motorsport wire and loom EFI. Euro 1 ECU, same as our cars. And you said it's got a bit of the red Punto in it as well? So, like I said, suspension wise and things like that, it's the same as ours. This, yep. And then engine wise and... Ah, uh, same as the one outside. Yeah, it's the same as the red one. Oh. This one's had a new dash in it as well over the... Uh... Oh, I'll have a look at that in a minute. So we've got the red roll cage, Momo seat, Spargo harnesses, your bath gear knob down there. Nice deep dish steering wheel. We've got the dials there as well. Has it still got glass windows, this one? Yeah, it's still got glass, same as mine. Again, we've got the door casters for lightweight. So again, like, this guy takes out of you, but you do all the sort of maintaining of the car. Yeah, we, you look after it for him. We prep it, set it up, and then he comes and takes it, it up and brings it racing with us. He does, he does the majority of the work when it's there. Oh, okay, As yeah. Small things, when you he, get there, yeah. He puts his own fuel in, yeah. sets his own tyre pressure. But if anything and, major sort of happens, you sort of yeah, get it back up together out, for him. But he, he likes to do the bits he can on his, yeah. on his own. So yeah. and it comes back here and we redo it, prep it for the next meeting. Why do they sit on the plates? Do they protect the tyres or something while it's sitting? Uh, yeah, just where they're sat, the slicks, when you go to move them, you end up just pulling like spots of paint off the floor. Oh, because it's so sticky. Yeah, so we just sit them on mats. I think I saw the wheel lift up as well. <laughs> I'm just going to get you on camera again because you're not only into obviously the Puntos but you've got one of these each <laughs> and this one's your Mitsubishi Evo. Yeah, Evo 6, 450 brake horsepower. And you've still got more cars than these as well, these are just the cars that you've chosen to bring up to the workshop today, you've still got a few other little yeah, hidden gems as well. Of other cars. Yeah, we'll definitely do a video on the other ones but yeah, that's here this running I think. Thank you to Simon, we got Chris in the background for showing me their pride and joys, their uh, Fiat Punto of Baths, let me into the world of Puntos as I'm not really clued up on them but hopefully I now am. And yeah, if you want to know more details on when the Punto is ready for hire for track days, it's an all-inclusive package, uh, sounds like a bargain to me to be honest. I'll link their Facebook page below, Southgate Motorsport, and I'll also leave their YouTube channel below where they also put GoPros on, you can see what the Puntos handle like 
on the track. So a big thanks to Southgate Motorsport for having me for the day. Uh, if you do like this video, then make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you know by the time video goes live on, on my automotive YouTube channel. Hopefully I'll catch up with these guys in another video again. Maybe go to a track day with them and film some behind the scenes footage it would be cool. So yeah, thanks to Southgate Motorsport. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another one. Cheers. What's the word for? Sparko. Harnesses. Harnesses. <laughs>